Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. Today I'll be explaining average piston speed. Now in my last video I was talking about Formula One engines and how the bore to stroke ratio was uh, pretty high and the reason for doing that was because you want to have a, a large bore and a small stroke so that you can keep your piston speed down because of flame propagation, uh, the speed at which, which uh, combustion can occur. So I'm going to explain uh, calculating piston speed and how that works. Now, piston speed. So how are we going to calculate how fast that piston is moving inside of your cylinder? Well, we're going to get an average speed uh, to make it a little bit easier. And so speed is a measure of distance for a given unit of time. So all we have to figure out is how far has this moved in a given unit of time? Well, let's use one revolution as our uh, time limit. So up and down, how long does that take to happen, and how far did it travel within that. So, our piston speed is going to be two times our stroke. The reason two times our stroke is because it's not only going to travel to the top of the cylinder, but it's also going to travel back down to the bottom of the cylinder in one revolution of the crank. So, two times the stroke times the revolutions per second. We're going to get this in units of meters per second, and then you can convert it to whatever you're familiar with. So, revolutions per second. Now, on your little tachometer, you're going to be given revolutions per minute. So, when you're doing the math, you're going to want to remember to divide by 60 so that you get that into revolutions per second. So, for a Formula One car, uh, here I just kind of drew a cylinder um, and went with some dimensions for a typical Formula One engine. So, a 40 millimeter stroke and a 100 millimeter bore. Now, these aren't exact, uh, they're actually a little bit larger, but just to prove that it's kind of in the right ballpark, uh, we want to find out the volume of this cylinder. So we've got pi r squared times h, you know, pi r squared, that's your circle, times h, that's the height of the cylinder, so you get the volume of the cylinder. Pi times 0.05 meters uh, squared, so 0.05 is going to be half of the diameter, so 50 millimeters and then 0.04 coming from the uh, 40 millimeters for the stroke. Okay, so that gives you 0.0003 meters cubed. You've got eight cylinders, so multiply that by eight to try and figure out the volume of the engine. So you got 0 0.0025 meters cubed. Convert that to liters, just move your decimal place over three, and you have 2.5 liters. Well, we know that Formula One engines are 2.4 liters, so obviously these are larger than they are supposed to be, but point is they're, they're pretty close. Uh, a small difference in that, I mean you drop one millimeter, it's going to make a pretty big difference uh, in the overall volume because that number is squared. Okay, so let's find out the piston speed of a Formula One vehicle. So we've got two times the stroke, which was 40 millimeters, so 0.04 meters, uh, times the speed, the amount of times that happens per second. So you've got 18,000, and we're just going to do it red line because that's the most interesting number, and that'll be the maximum. So max, uh, the red line for Formula One being 18,000, so 18,000 revolutions per minute. We want that in seconds divided by 60 seconds in a minute. So then you get a number, when you multiply all that out, of 24 meters per second. So that piston inside of that cylinder is moving, if, if it were to be moving at a constant speed, it will be 53 miles per hour. That's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, so just as a comparison, I figured I'd throw my Integra in there. I thought it could compete with Formula One pretty well. So I have a B18 B1 engine. It's probably the greatest engine in the world uh, in my car. Great for, uh, you know, oil leaks sometimes and uh, burning oil and things like that. Anyways, other good things about it are, well, uh, it's uh, average piston speed. So we've got two times the stroke of my engine is uh, 89 millimeters and the red line is about 6800. So do the math there, multiply those across, you get a speed of 20.2 meters per second or 45 miles per hour. That really isn't too much different from a Formula One car. So uh, you guys can see why I chose the vehicle I did for my daily driver. Uh, it's pretty much like a Formula One car, just driving around town. Uh, Alright, so let's get a little more crazy. Let's go with the Type R, and let's go with the craziest Type R, which has the B18C motor, and it's in the uh, DB8 model. Now, I believe this is only in the uh, Honda Integra, which is sold in Japan. I could be wrong, 
but I got these numbers from Wikipedia, so if you get angry, that's where they came from. So the Type R B18C engine has a stroke of 87.2 millimeters. That I'm pretty sure on. The rev limit, uh, that kind of varies with the different engines thrown in the Type R. Some say 8200. Uh, I've, I've seen 8700, but anyways, I saw on Wikipedia uh, 8600, so that's the number I'm going to use. So when you multiply across 2 times 0 0.0872 times 8600 divided by 60, you get a piston speed of 25 meters per second. Yes, faster than a Formula One car. In fact, if you uh, convert that over, 55.9 miles per hour. So another 2.9 miles per hour faster average piston speed than a Formula One car. So a Type R is pretty much the greatest car in the world. That's what we have discovered here. Um, Actually, there's probably other cars that can that can uh, match that. So, but anyways, Type R and S2000 would probably probably be better than that, if not around that. Um, but anyways, a Type R can hang with an F1. That's what that's what we learned from this. No, it really can't. But anyways, why do you think these numbers are so similar? I mean, why wouldn't Formula One just blow away the competition? Well, the problem is. When you have combustion, the flame, the speed of combustion is only so fast. You can only expand air so quickly. You can only have a flame travel through an air fuel mixture so quickly. So basically, uh, these cars, the F1, the Type R, they're they're pretty much reaching the limit of that flame speed, and so you can't really exceed that. Now, what Formula One wanted to do was have higher revolutions per minute, and in order to do that, they had to lower their bore or their stroke. I apologize lower the stroke. So by lowering the stroke, you can lower your piston speed, get it to a reasonable speed, and then you can have higher RPMs. So, uh, one thing I challenge you to do, find out what, what your engine uh, stroke is, find out what your red line is or your rev limit on your vehicle, do the math, it's very simple, just uh, plug in two numbers and get the average piston speed of your vehicle, see if you are faster than my incredible Acura Integra with 45 mile per hour average piston speed. Um, and also, if any of you have diesel vehicles or something like that, where the speed might be very uh, slow, uh, I'd like to see that as well. So just post in the comments um, and, you know, have a little competition. Who's got the better average piston speed? You know, that's what cars are all about. So, yeah, just let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.